This is Drosera adelaide, and it's a very gorgeous Queensland sundew, and it's endemic to tropical rainforests. So these plants in nature won't be this red, and they're usually a, a sort of brilliant green coloration with red tentacles. And they usually get a lot larger than this. You can see for a reference with a quarter, I haven't fed these plants for over two years, so this is pretty much they're living off of um, the residual food I gave them two years ago, as well as just extracting nutrients from the soil. They seem to do best in a long fiber sphagnum mix and especially if you give them a large pot they can get I've seen some plants with four inch leaf spans and so if you feed them a lot and you give them a large pot that's your best chances for getting a large plant. Mine at the moment only has leaves about one, one and a half inches long so there's a diameter of about three, three and a half inches, I guess. Um, but this is actually a, just a medium-sized plant from what I've seen. And you can see that at the bottom of the pot here, my pot is transparent because I use an old CD case. This is about a five to six inch pot. And you'll see that the roots really go all the way down to the pot, at the bottom of the pot, and they'll generate plantlets wherever they see light. So I'd highly recommend using a dark, non-transparent pot so that you don't have your plants wasting their energy on these plantlets all throughout the entire pot. Because you can kind of see that everywhere the roots are that they can see light, they really do generate a ton of plants and that drains energy from the plant. So they are really great for propagation via root cuttings, leaf cuttings. As you can see they spread very well on their own as well. And they're not the greatest with seed production, apparently. they. This is the first time mine have actually flowered. And they have some really nice, interesting flowers. Five petal kind of looks like a star. I, th I haven't really been able to monitor these too closely, but I think this flower has been open for like a day already. And this is the second day and it's still going strong. But most sundew flowers usually only last a few hours. Um, so this is pretty surprising. And for some reason mine just haven't flowered for... <laughs> I've had these for six years now and this is the first time they flowered. So I think it just must be a combination of the, the pot, getting um, a dark pot to prevent the waste of energy on plantlets like that. And just feeding them a lot will definitely help them flower as, as often as uh, possible. This plant is commonly available at Lowe's. This was actually my first plant that I ever uh, got. And, well, speaking or in terms of sundews. And... So it, it's very, it's a good starter plant, but it can cause some problems for growers. So one thing you may want to do is, when you first get it, just make sure that the, you, you boost the humidity for a while. You'll also notice that the plants are usually light starved uh, from the store, so they, they don't even have red coloration on the tentacles. But you'll notice that after a few weeks, if you give them bright enough light, the tentacles will start turning red. And then eventually you'll see the nice red leaf coloration you can develop um, after you give them bright enough light intensity. And these plants are growing uh, just about three to four inches under these T8 lights. And right now I raised them for the video. But um, so you can get some really nice red coloration with these. Some growers have problems in their conditions. It could be related to humidity. Um, other factors might play in. But it seems like these plants, if you aren't giving them too high of temperatures, um, they can handle really low humidity. I'm only growing these in about 40% 40, 40 humidity right now. I'm not growing them in a terrarium or providing any additional humidity, and they're doing just fine. Um, in the midst of summer, they do uh, best if you provide additional humidity, especially if temps are up in the 90s, because these are tropical uh, plants that grow in the rainforest, so high humidity and warm temperatures will allow them to grow quite quickly. When you first get them to um, settle in, it might take quite a while until you're able to reduce the humidity. Um, these plants originally were, uh, before my pot started breaking, I had these sealed with saran wrap over the top. The pot was about up to here, so I had a nice layer over the top. And that meant that these were under high humidity for about the first year. So they really took off during that time, and that's kind of how I established them. And now they're pretty much established and I was able to reduce the humidity and take off the humidity layer compu completely so that's kind of just uh, a way that you'll have to figure out in your own conditions what's going to work best for you so if they're not producing any dew 
that's probably one of the first things after you give them more light is that you're going to want to raise the humidity until they can get established. And I, I really recommend this sundew. Um, if you can handle this one, you can pretty much handle a wide variety of sundews. Since some growers even that can get capensis to grow very well, um, they can just never get this plant to grow. So I would tr recommend trying this, but if you don't succeed with it, don't give up all hope. This is can be a bit pickier for some growers. Um, but just remember that letting it establish itself in high humidity will definitely help things. And always try to feed them um, as much as possible, but uh, keep the food portions a reasonably small size at first, just so you don't uh, start growing mold or other unwanted side effects of that, So, especially when growing in high humidity. So I'm going to stop ranting right now, and uh, I'll just end this video right now with a nice little shot of this flower. So. This was Drusera Adelaide, and I hope this was informative and uh, happy growing.